We spent four days at the Petrified Forest National Park. In this video, we'll show you what we did ordered from the North Gate to the South Gate, and at the end, we'll tell you about our hike to the Devil's Playground. This is a permitted hike, and the park only gives out three permits a week, so we'll let you know how we got the permit and if it was worth it. The Petrified Forest National Park sits in northeastern Arizona. It was established as a national park in 1962 to help protect the fossilized wood found at the site. The Petrified Forest has beautiful rock formations and the well-known Painted Desert. Dinosaur fossils have also been found here, so the park has a lot of history. We started on the north side of the park. Once we passed through the north gate, we were on Petrified Forest Road. This is a 26.8 mile scenic drive that takes visitors through the park. The road also provides access to all of the trails and overlooks with only a few exceptions. Just inside the north gate is the Painted Desert Visitor Center. This is where you can get permits for hiking and camping. There are also a couple gift shops and a restaurant. The park is very remote and there's a lot of driving involved, so you want to make sure that you have plenty of gas. There is a gas station on site. Just be aware that for us, the price was almost $1.50 more than the next closest gas station. So try to fill it before you get to the park. Next, we entered through the main gate. The admission was $25 for the vehicle, and we could come back for the next seven days. The ranger also let us know that the dogs were allowed on all of the trails, including the Devil's Playground. From there, the first stop was an overlook. The first few overlooks sit above the main portion of the Painted Desert, and they offer some great views, the best being Tawa Point. There are numerous overlooks through the park, and we won't list them all, but the overlooks alone can keep you busy for a day. Tawa Point also serves as a trailhead for the Rim Trail. This is a 1.2 mile trail that goes around the southern side of the Painted Desert, and it makes for a great sunset walk. Just up the road, we stopped at the Painted Desert Inn. In its early days, the inn was a Route 66 landmark. Now it mostly serves as a museum and a gift shop. But it was worth a quick stop to check out the architecture and history. Moving south, there were a few more overlooks before crossing I-40 into the southern part of the park. This is where most of the notable hikes are located. First, we visited Puerco Pueblo. This isn't so much a hike as it is a historical site. The trail is only 0.3 miles long, but it walks visitors through an 800-year-old Pueblo site. The remaining sandstone brick foundations provide a distinct view of what the Pueblo once looked like. Driving south, we passed the teepees, one of the more popular rock formations in the park. Then we headed to the most popular trail in the park, Blue Mesa. Blue Mesa is a one mile paved loop that took us down into the Painted Desert. The area had a unique mixture of blue, purple, and gray banded badlands, and it made for some of the best views in the park. A little south of there, we visited the Jasper Forest. You can walk out to the overlook and enjoy the views of the forest below, but you can also venture down a three-mile trail that winds through the Jasper Forest. At one point long ago, this site was a lush forest. Now you can see the remnants of that forest in the petrified wood that's scattered along the trail. Not far from there was the Crystal Forest, which was a paved one-mile path that looped through another smaller petrified forest. Our final stop on Petrified Forest Road was the Rainbow Forest District. This area has a gift shop with a film about the history of the park. It also has a museum with fossils, displays, and a dig site for the kids. 
The Rainbow District is also home to the densest collection of petrified wood in the park. So it offers trailheads for the giant logs and the long logs trails, as well as the Agate House. And from there we drove to the south gate and exited the park. But the petrified forest has one more trail that is a little harder to access, the Devil's Playground. The Devil's Playground is a seven and a half mile trail in the wilderness area of the petrified forest, and you have to get a permit to do the trail. But the park only allows for three permits a week, so access is extremely limited. We got a permit and this is what we learned along the way. Three permits become available each Wednesday, and they're given out on a first-come, first-serve basis. Also, each permit covers a vehicle. So one permit can cover up to four people, but you can't apply for the permit in advance. You have to apply in person at the visitor center, and the permit is only good for that day. And your whole group has to be present to apply. Once we jumped through all of the hoops, we got our permit and headed to the trailhead. The trailhead is accessed through private property, so you have to get back on I-40 and go to exit 303 to find an ungraded, unkept dirt road. It was rough. Access is not good by any means, so both four-wheel drive and high clearance are encouraged, especially if there's been rain recently. When we finally reached the trailhead and set out, there was an immediate water crossing and it was still a mile and a half hike to reach the Devil's Playground. The trail itself was beautiful. It had unique rock formations and colored badlands, with petrified wood scattered throughout the trail. Although the ground was mostly clay, and since the ground was wet, the clay stuck to everything and made our boots pretty heavy making the trail take longer than we expected. The landscape was unique and at times it felt like another planet. It was tough getting the permit, it was a rough ride to the trailhead, and it was a difficult hike. But for us, it was well worth the effort. Just make sure you take plenty of water. For a more in-depth look at our hike through the Devil's Playground, check out our Arizona travel film, where we do hikes across the state and we visit Phoenix, Sedona, Flagstaff, and Vermilion Cliffs National Monument.